Hello students, uh, this video clip uh, will uh, cover how to value the venture stock uh, by uh, the free cash flow of equity model. And then we'll also identify additional fun, uh, financing needed or the excess cash uh, through the long-term uh, financial planning. So we assume you guys already uh, read all this description yeah, very carefully. And this model is comprised of the part one, projected uh, the financial uh, statement, the project income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of the cash flow uh, for five years. Based on this long-term planning, I uh, will uh, calculate the free cash flow of equity model. Once we get this, all the free cash flow model, uh, free cash flows uh, of the equity uh, throughout the project year, we'll use the discounted rate, not by a whack, but uh, the cost of equity. We have two cost of equity percentage. First at startup stage, second at early maturity stage. Uh, because venture capital has different percentage of equity, for example, 2022 and 2026, I will have the different riskiness. 2026 is maturity stage much safer, but 2021, nobody knows what would happen in the future in this, in this uh, the venture capital. So as a practice uh, uh, during the class, we are going to use sales percentage method, sales percentage method. So first, what we have to do is to make the projection of the sales, and then we'll calculate uh, the percentage of sales in actual and then we'll apply that percentage of sales in the project years. Okay, so let's begin. The project sales growth percentage as described here, we put 50%, 40%, and 20%, 10%, and 7%. Yeah, it can be based on, on the historical average rate, but the usually venture doesn't have that historical rate. So uh, we can calculate uh, the, the, the sustainable sales growth rate uh, at the, as we uh, the practice during the class, the ROE at times the retention ratio. Usually retention ratio is 100%. But if the company distributes the cash out as the dividend to the investors, uh, definitely this retention ratio uh, should be the adjusted by that payout ratio. Okay, so it's 50%, 40%, 20 10 and, and 7%. Uh, we have a strong uh, research, strong research, and then we have a very specific the projected uh, sales growth. We assume that, and then sales price, as this uh, described here, the sales price per unit is expected to remain twenty dollars. So, we are, uh, we just yeah, take this twenty dollars, of your product of that product, uh, produced by or service produced by or provided by this business. Then units sold must be now increased by this projected sales growth, right? So this must be increased by 50%. And then next year also increased by its corresponding the, the, the percentage growth, sales growth. Once we got this, the projected sales, uh, the unit sold, and then we apply here to measure uh, the sales. But first, the income statement, we first calculate the percentage of the sales based on uh, this assumption here. So when you make your own projections, you must have your actual or almost the fixed, uh, the, the base years, base years, uh, the, 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 the income statement. If you haven't started your uh, business, but yeah, you can just uh, set up uh, your, what you expected in the income statement, each balance. And here, the sales percentage based on actual. Then I'm going to put this. Then we'll fix this percentage on sales. And then 100%, right? And then let me just drag up here. And then, because the Depreciation, as described here, depreciation can be forecast eight percent of net, eight percent. There you go, eight percent of net fixed asset, right? So I'm gonna use not the percentage of sales method, but we'll uh, the link is eight percent. 
the, the depreciation from 8% of a net fixed asset here. Net fixed asset, right? Okay, then let's start. This $20,000 extra sales now. Oh, sorry. This, uh, the sales, now the sales per unit times sales price per unit times the projected unit sold. And then we drag to the right. And then we have the projected sales increased by this projected uh, sales gross. And then that will be the aligned with this unit sold. And then cost of goods sold based on the percentage of the sales of 2021, we fix this percentage 55, 55, 55% times the sales. And then let's drag to the right. And then we make this all the cost of goods sold, right? As a percentage of the sales. But it will definitely increase because the, our sales growth also increase, right? And then gross profit is just that we can just sum this sales and cost of goods sold up. Then let's just drag. What about operating expenses? Operating expenses is also 30% fixed, right? And then we'll fix this 30% to the corresponding sales. Oops. And then here, that is the one of a point of exercise here. The depreciation 8% of the net fixed asset is now, how do we get it? Now, minus 8%. Right, but this eight percent must be linked to the net sales. Right there, you go. I know oh, we haven't calculated this net fixed asset yet, but uh, as 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 we finish it, as we finish this, uh, the balance projection, and then it will automatically generate it on the on the income statement. Okay, so don't worry. But you have to clearly put this equation equation there. And then let's drag it to the right. So if it now we sum all this up from gross profit, operating expense, depreciation, and then let's just drag to the right. The interest expense we have an assumption. Interest expense the ten percent annually, and a loan balance would not change through uh, the uh, throughout the uh, the project years. But if you have an assumption that you can increase or decrease the credit line, because that is the uh, the bank loan, bank loan on those short term, right liability credit line, and then you have to align this ten percent to the bank loan, right? So again, here, ten percent times no, where is the bank loan? Bank loan, there you go, but minus because the interest expense right and then let's just drag it to the right i know it's still uh just the zero balance because all this the interest expense is linked to the just empty place but once we produce this balance sheet projected years and then yeah, it will automatically generate it and then i will get the right amount now this must be sum this to up because what we put is negative there. Then let's drag it to the right. This tax rate is 40%, right? 40% times, right? We link to this, there we go. And then let's drag. Net income is now the sum of this before tax and tax amount. Then let's drag. Again, this income statement, once we finish this income statement, it's not, it's not uh, the the completed one because this depreciation must be updated and then it interest expense also updated it so uh, based on this uh the updated uh the expenses this net income or the ebit and tax amount will be automatically automatically adjusted okay but once we finish this then we'll see the right income statement projection okay See you guys in the next video clips where we'll uh, finish this balance sheet of uh, uh, forecasting and understatement of the cash flows, hopefully. Okay, see you guys.